Hello there, Nick Zuccarello here, and I would like to show you a few things that I discovered with tiling textures. I have a previous video that I did a setup for how you can actually sculpt some of the tiling texture detail inside of ZBrush. And then now what I'd like to tell you is about a few things that I've discovered through the process whenever you go to bake this information inside a Substance Painter and then pushing that over to Unreal and doing some cool things like parallax mapping on there. So let's go ahead and get a start on this and take a look at what needs to happen in order for us to be able to bake everything correctly. I'm gonna hop over to Maya first and I'm gonna show you this uh, special plane setup that I made. And I really wish I could take credit for coming up with this idea. This came from a video of Bradford Smith, somebody they used to work with a long time ago, really great uh, texture artist and material artist. And you ought to take a look at some of his content. Uh, really great artist again. Uh, but he came up with this method of building this special piece of geo where basically this area is going to be our tile. And then if we um, basically take half the distance and then we push it over here, and then we take half the distance here and push it over here, do the same for the top and the bottom, that'll give us a setup that will work with uh, inside of ZBrush for your brush mode set to wrap and then you can set a value of two for that and then whenever you sculpt like here and go across this edge it'll repeat back over here so that's what causes you to be able to tile on there the reason the geo looks maybe a little bit weird to you this is nice and evenly divided so if we use subdivision levels this will give us a nice even division on here and then this bleeds out past this and then the geometry gets a whole lot more simple out here it doesn't really matter too much for it for that right so this gave us the setup for being able to do the sculpting part of it. But when we go into Substance um, Painter, we need to do something special with the UVs, right? So what I've discovered in Substance Painter is it doesn't like UVs that are outside the zero to one range. You can do that if you are going to do UDMs and do UV tiles like that. But if, for this setup that we have, like this piece of geo, if we wanted to have the same functionalities that ZBrush has for being able to paint across this edge and have it show up over here, we've got to do uh, a few things to the UVs on here, right? So to start off, like if I just uh, hit F11, go to my faces, and I were to do a UV planar map on this, and I was able to project from the Y axis and then just push straight down, that's what the UVs would look like sitting in the zero to one space. Um, then from there, I took this and hit F10, selected all my edges, I'll double click on that, hold down shift, double click on that to keep adding this to this. And then I could just go into this area right here and I can cut the UVs just like that, right? Um, from there, it's a matter of uh, right click, I'll select my UVs, I'll just select all this. And if you wanna grow the selection of UVs, you can hit shift and then the um, arrow key, which is tied to the period key and comma key so that grows and shrinks things. You can come up here to transform. And then if you set your values on something specific like 0.5, you could take these values and then you could just push it over like this and you could have it go into the zero to one space. Again, I can do the same thing for this area over here and then just push this like this. Then at that point, I've got to go and I've got to fix up the top part of this and I'll just push these down like that. Let's go here like that. And then I'll push this up here like that, okay? Um, then at that point, I would need to just scale these things up um, a very specific amount. Sometimes um, I know there's ways over here that we could scale that uh, with numeric values within through there. Sometimes if I need to scale things up a specific way and I don't know exactly what that number is, I'll try to get it as close as I can possibly get it and hit undo. And then you can open up the, um, the script editor over here and you can see um, when I hit undo on there, it's got this part of the script where it says undo poly edit and then it gives me these numbers, right? So I could just copy that and then I'll just paste it down here. I've already done this before, but then I would need to figure out, oh, I need this to be a whole value like this. So I just get rid of that value there and make that a two and a two. And then if you've got your UV selected and then you uh, hit control enter, it should just do that part of the script and you can see it's going to give us a very specific value. Again, some of that exists within through here so you could figure out numerically how to scale it. But if you're ever confused as to what that value should be, that's one way of being able to get that thing done. 
Okay. So then I exported that thing out as an OBJ. And I, again, it looks weird. We've got these weird overlapping UVs, but you'll see what this looks like inside of Substance. So let's hop over to Substance Painter. And then for the import of this, I'll just set up a new project uh, right here like this. I'll just leave it on this template, this Unreal Engine 4 starter thing, document resolution. I'll put that to 4096. But then this is the setting that I want to have for use UV tile workflow. And this preserve UV tile layout per material. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go select and then find my um, piece of geometry that I exported out. Hit open for that. Hit OK. And let me just disregard that. And then now we've got this plane and um, doesn't look like anything special. But if we start to paint on this thing, you can see that now we're going to get the ability to paint across this. So this might be, be kind of a cool setup for you to just figure out how to paint directly inside of Substance Painter and do some tiling texture stuff, right? Just for the painting ability. But once you have that set up, um, now you're ready to go ahead and be able to bake your information on here. Okay. So if I go to um, the texture set area and then I go to bake mesh maps, this is where we can go in through here. And if this doesn't look like this for you and I had to reset this again, uh, you might want to go to window and then reset UI, but it should look something like this. This is where we can plug in our high poly mesh that we've got um, for this. So I got this stylized uh, wood high sculpt like that and I'll pull this in. You might have to do something with the uh, the max frontal distance and increase that to get that to go a little bit higher on here. And I think I had to grow the, the rear distance so it has the rays kind of casting down a little bit further to catch some of that. So I'll make those numbers um, roughly the same thing. The other thing is if we want to go into um, inside of Unreal and you want to do the parallax map occlusion stuff, you need to bake a height map. So I'm just going to click that here. I'll just say bake selected textures real quick and just, just run through this like this. Then it should go pretty quickly. And you can see what's pretty cool is that this is actually this tiling piece of geo, but now it's actually baked it to this plane and we can test out and see that it's actually um, giving us the correct results that we need for things, okay? So now inside of Substance Painter, if you want to test out this parallax uh, occlusion mapping on here, that's a possibility for you to do. Um, so I'm just going to go over here real quick and I'm going to just check out this. I'm going to turn on shadow information and I know that's going to make it a little bit darker. I might put this on intensive and then take my shadow opacity, drop it back. So when we do the displacement part, the shadows uh, should show up for us on there. And then um, I'm just going to activate my post effects on here. Should have temporal into seeing on here. I'm going to go to my shader settings on here. And um, the other thing is with the specular quality, just to keep keep in mind on this, um, if you're going to push this to Unreal, this low setting for specular quality does not give you accurate results. So if you need to find something that's going to fit a little bit closer to what Unreal gives you, put the specular quality on to very high like that. I know it probably doesn't look like a huge change, but after you've got some uh, specular material on there, it's going to make a pretty big difference on how that specular looks on here. So we can actually enable the parallax occlusion mapping. So if we go ahead and do that, there's a strength to it. And right now it's not going to do anything for us. Let me show you why. We need to actually enable that height map that we've uh, put on there and we need to enable it in the material. So if you go to the uh, texture area, let me pull this down just a little bit so you can see this. We've got these different channels. We can go ahead and click the plus button on there and then go ahead and enable displacement. Okay, so that at least enables it for us and the channels for us. It's not going to do anything until we go over to the layers area and then I'm just going to make a new fill layer and I'll just call this displace and it could call it parallax occlusion too. And on here, the only thing that I really need for this is just the displacement channel that's on there. And I can't remember if you hold down shift, if it'll do all those. There, there is an option for being able to turn everything off. Uh, yeah, pretty easily. So this displacement, I'm gonna go ahead and click on here. And uh, what I'm looking for is the height channel that we baked out. 
So here's the height channel that we have right now. And then now um, we should be able to start to see something with this, uh, with this parallax. So let's go back to our material on here. So we've got this strength factor and you can see how that starts to work for us, which is pretty cool. Um, the thing that I noticed in substance is that it doesn't seem to do anything with uh, shadow information on this, which it actually does in Unreal, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, so if you wanted to play around with what you think the height of this stuff should be, maybe I'll put this on something like five. And if you're trying to get better quality on this, maybe you could up the samples of this to something like 32 or something like that. So you, you can play around with that. So this is one method. Um, the other thing that you could do is instead of um, using parallax occlusion mapping is that you could actually uh, do um, displacement within here. Uh, so you could actually put this on here and then you could change the scale of this. Let's put this on height like this. I also need to up the subdivision count on this. So let me put that back on displacement. And then that's pretty, pretty large for that, right? And then I'm just gonna crank the uh, subdivision count uh, pretty high on that. So um, I did notice this weird kind of draw thing, like you change the options and uh, you have to move your camera a little bit and then it starts to uh, give you a little bit better results on that. Um, I will say this about what I'm taking a look at here. Let's do this, I'll do point zero two, something like that. Um, the quality of the displacement is not going to look very good on here. And that is because that plane that I used in here had even quads. If we hop back on over to Maya and take a look at that, you can see it's basically subdividing this. So this is going to give us really nice results in this area, but out here it's got really big polygons. So it's going to be dividing those. Every time you divide something, it takes one of these quads and it divides it into four and then it smooths it and everything else. Same thing like, um, subdivision levels inside of ZBrush, right? So that same thing is actually happening inside of ZBrush. So if I bring my sculpt back and I take a look at what I did inside of ZBrush and I turn on the, uh, the polyframe for that, that same division thing is going on inside of Substance Painter. So that's why it looks pretty bad outside of there, right? But really to get this tiling workflow to go, really this is the only part that we care about as far as like how much quality is on there. Now I did build this extra bleed area that I was telling you about. If I turn on the polyframe, this is our tile, this is our bleed area. And then outside here, it doesn't matter at all what's going on with that, right? So that's what I was telling you with the brush and then this works per brush. If you go to the curve area, which I have no idea why this isn't curved, but here's your wrap mode. So per brush, if you turn this wrap mode onto two, then you're gonna get this thing to start to tile for you correctly across there, right? So again, this area is nothing but buffer and bleed. Um, and then actually whenever I export this out to Substance Painter, what I'm doing is just hiding this, control shift click on this area and I'll click it again to do, me, do the inverse of that. And then I would just kick this out of my model. So again, whenever we bake that, it's only really looking at this information here pushing it out and making sure that it bleeds correctly is gonna make sure we don't have any weird seams or any tiles or anything else like that. So again, the subdivision, the way that it works inside of ZBrush is gonna be the same exact way that it works inside of Substance Painter. So if we go back here, that's basically what's going on here. You can see that there's just not as many divisions going on inside of this area. So that's why it's gonna look a little bit bad just in case you're kind of wondering about that, right? Um, and then so past that, then I just did some work on there to um, get this to look a little bit better. So if I go back here, I'll just card the changes to that. And um, yeah, so just uh, adding some color on there. I actually took the height map information and then made it a little bit darker in the darker areas just to get each one of these wood planks to look a little bit uh, lighter and darker from each other and get a little bit of value going there. So let's hop on over to Unreal now and then take a look at maybe what some of the results look like in Unreal. 
and um, I found some really good video content on this and how to set this up. So I'm going to pull this down here. So this is the video that I found that uh, showed how to actually set up this material. So if you want a deep dive on how everything's set up and a really good explanation for this, this was a really good, um, really good video that I found for that. So you might want to take a look at that. But the uh, quick version of this, um, if you take a look at the material that was set up, let me pull this down onto this window here, and then we can take a look at the material on this. And if you are just concerned about um, this node within through here, I'm just gonna right click and push this up and then zoom in. So there's this parallax occlusion mapping node. And if you just right click, you can search for that and find it. It looks pretty intimidating. The one thing that was a little bit weird is that you do need this texture object and you can just right click on there and search for texture object and you should be able to find that and then be able to plug that in. And then this is what um, you're actually using for um, the, the height map on there. Now the texture map that I have, I'll double click on that. Um, I, I baked this thing at a much higher higher resolution 4096 and then I've got this LOD bias set to two so it's uh, doesn't need to do anything super crazy for the resolution on that uh, but I actually have a uh, just a gray scale map for that that I was using on that part uh, so that gets plugged into there and you can see some of the different uh, values on here um, I would suggest that you actually uh, maybe hold down one and click for some of these scalar values and then right click and convert to parameters and then make a material instance. And then that way you can actually tune a lot of these different things that you have on side of there, right? And um, again, if you want a really good uh, explanation of everything on here, just go through that video and you can see how to uh, set everything up. But that's basically how this was set up. Um, you're going to be able to do this pixel depth offset and plug it into this area within through there. I was using pack maps, so I've got um, AO, roughness, and metallic on here flowing into these different channels. I've got the uh, normal map on here. The parallax UVs gets fed into the UV area. And on the color map on there, um, if you want uh, this shadow setup, this is what he did for this for a lerp node. And then this gets fed into the A, and then you multiply it by this shadow multiply by B there, and that gets pushed into uh, the base color on there. This UV tile thing, um, I just did want to point this out. I thought this was kind of cool that um, anytime that you have something plugged into um, Unreal, you can double click on this and do a reroute node, and then you can actually right click on it and say convert to named reroute. And then that basically just gives you a portal at that point. And then you can copy this. Oops, sorry about that. You can copy this. And that's my cat knocking things over on me. Good job, kitty. Um, let's go back here real quick. There we go. Um, so that gives you um, this, this output that you got here. Let me delete that. And you can just copy and paste this. And let's say I needed this to flow out in multiple areas of my material. This comes in really handy for all kinds of stuff. So I could push this here and here and then just plug that in. I just want to point that out. I, I, I was confused by one of the uh, materials that Unreal put out there. And I was like, how are they doing that? And it's super, super simple. But you have to know kind of where that exists. So I did this to do... Um, uh, a parameterization of UV tiles. So you take your texture coordinate, you take a U and a V and you append those two together and then you multiply it. And that gives you the ability to parameterize your UV tiles on there. And then I pushed that out and then there was the result of this pushed into the UV. So that was maybe just something I did that was a little bit uh, special for that. Okay. So the results are, uh, Pretty, pretty darn cool in here. And again, if you uh, make the material and then make a material instance, right click and make material instance. Now I've got everything uh, pretty much parameterized on there um, and I can interactively change the values on there. I'll just hold down L and move that around on the material. So you can see those. So that gives you the ability to tune this stuff within through there. And um, let me just say yes on that real quick. 
And then you can see that these are just flat planes, but they have the illusion uh, that there's depth to everything. And if we went and we took a look at our geometry on here, right there, and if we took a sphere and you drag a sphere out, uh, not that type, let's do, let's do this type of geometry. I'll just drag a sphere out there. And I do have decals on for that uh, decal. So I don't want that to receive a decal. So you can see what that looks like there. But the cool thing is this parallax occlusion mapping with the um, this part, and I, I, I would like to call this out for the video, that if you are using the pixel depth offset, it's a really cool feature, and it gives you this thing here. Basically, you get a piece of geometry, and it acts like it's real geometry, right? So it's actually got the height there, and then you can push the sphere around, and you can see that it looks like this is pushed down further. This is up a little bit higher. The only problem with this is that if you get if you got this like really weird dark shading on everything, and I'll select one of these planes, um, cast shadows. So if you have cast shadows turned on, um, it is going to do some weird. Let me turn that off for this. So there's multiple planes on here, and if I have cast shadows turned on for this, it'll do it for this one, and also for this one. Um, it's not showing it right now, but um, you might actually get some really weird dark shading on stuff. So um, it's not actually showing for me right now, which is, uh, that's fine. But you probably will get some problems with this. So if that happens to you, just take this cast shadow and then you turn that off and then you shouldn't have any, any problems. Uh, what the gentleman said in the video, was that if you actually do need these things to cast shadows for you, what you can do is take another version of it and have it hidden and have cast shadows on that. But the uh, version with the parallax occlusion mapping, you would turn the shadow information off for that. So there are some workarounds for that. But um, so again, I thought this was just a really great technique. There's just a few problems and things that I ran into along the process, and I wanted to pull that to your attention and show you everything that I discovered through the process and try to help you out through that. So hopefully this is going to help you make really cool tiling textures, be able to get your bakes done, push the results into Unreal, and profit. Cool.